Good afternoon and welcome to CCA webinar series, The Role of Robotic Process Automation in Delivering Improved CX and Cost Reductions. The session we're running today is being done in association with TTEC and we'll have an expert contributor from them that we'll get to later on in the session. So welcome to everyone. My name is Pauline Cochran, I'm Head of Research and Partnerships at CCA and I'll be your host for the day. Before we kick off, I just want to run through some housekeeping for the session. Uh, everyone uh, should be on mute, but if you could just double check that your telephone is uh, on mute so that we can avoid any background noise for participants, that would be really helpful. Uh, don't worry too much if you, uh, if you feel you missed some of the content as we go through today or you missed some important points that you wanted to capture. We will be recording, or we are recording the session, and it will be available afterwards along with the, with the slides, so you can be, you're, you're able to refer back to a later point. We will have some time for questions uh, towards the end of the session, so if you do have a question as we work through the content, then please do use the Q&A function, which is on the right-hand side of your screen to post any questions. And please do that as we go through, rather than necessarily waiting until the end, but we can obviously take questions um, at the end also. If you want to use the chat function and message myself um, on that, then please do so. Again, you'll find that on the right-hand side of your screen. If you wish to join in any conversation on Twitter, then please do so also, and the Twitter handles are on screen for you now also. Okay, so we've got a really interesting agenda today. This is a topic that's been uh, growing in interest, I guess, for our network, and um, we're really, uh, really delighted to, to have Raphael Domeni, who's partnered in CX Expert at TTEC, who's going to take us through a lot of the work that they've been focusing on uh, there. Uh, before we get to that point in the agenda, I'm just going to take you through a couple of things that we're seeing through the network that, that connects a bit with what we're trying to do, I guess, in the whole self-service and automation piece uh, as we serve customers. So I'll, t I'll take you through a couple of slides, and then I'm going to hand over to Rafa to take you through the, the bulk of today's session. So we regularly uh, survey our network, um, we've got a couple of surveys live at the moment, we've just had our uh, annual convention recently as well, and lots of content coming at us around you know, challenges as we go into a new decade. We've been talking about 2020, it feels for, for quite a long time, and all of a sudden we're here, and you know, we're getting to that crux point where some important decisions need to be made about how we service customers. Back uh, earlier this year, around about February time, we asked uh, our network what did they feel were their biggest challenges that they were going to face as they go through 2019, and we're doing the same piece of work as we go uh, through to 2020, so do watch out for that uh, survey if you see it coming into your inbox, and please do share your opinions with us. But you can see where we're circled on the chart here that you know, from a customer behaviour perspective, you know, their expectations of having quick and simple service absolutely needs to be joined up and connected. Uh, improving communication um, and information available to customers, so making, uh, I guess, customer education perhaps a bit, a bit, bit clearer and how they should interact with you as an organisation, what's the best uh, channel of choice to get their problem resolved or the question answered. And really, fundamentally, a lot of um, taking a lot of effort out to, to, to resolve that issue. So, how can we smooth out some of the kinks in the processes? And I guess, how can we embrace and uh, use technologies to, to help us do that? So, lots to think about there. Clearly, as we um, as we go through today's session, and hopefully, uh, Rafa will give you some pointers on what maybe will help for your organisation in that respect. We then asked, you know, what are your organisation's biggest customer service challenges as a whole? And again, you can see the kind of bigger chunk that we um, towards the, the high end of the chart there. You know, it's about improving ability to to be more agile and flexible um, to manage demand. So as as that demand is coming into your organisation, how can you best respond to that? Um, and that can be by using uh, smart technologies. It can be using, uh, you know, really effective. Uh, customer journeys and understanding where the pain points are there. How do you uh, maximise digital and social channels? How do we meet those rising expectations as people get to use things that are really simple and smooth? Um, but at the same time, you know, whilst we thought there might have been more of a shift from from voice uh, interactions to to more multi-channel um, and digital. 
communication options. Really what we're seeing in the main, now this is not exclusive, but in the main, it's just other ways to make contact with organisations versus huge reductions that maybe had been anticipated uh, when channels were perhaps introduced. So, so how can we embrace that technology in the right way that might help us get to that point where it's becoming a bit more effective with um, experience overall and a bit more efficient for us as organisations? So I'm now going to hand over to Rafa, who's going to take us through um, the next kind of half an hour or so, and um, he'll be talking to you specifically about the kind of whole robotics piece. So, uh, Rafa, over to you. We should be able to hear you loud and clear. Thank you very much, Pauline. Really appreciate it. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Rafa Domene. I'm the partner in TTEC running robotics and automation worldwide. So my intention today is, is to explain you which is our experience, what we have done, and see if this uh, brings any value to you guys. So let me go and introduce, well, the, the, the subject of the webinar is about how to use robotic process automation to improve customer experience and reduce uh, cost. Well, a, a brief introduction about who we are. We are Tita Global. Uh, we, we have like 54,000 employees uh, working all over the world. We are all over the world in 26 countries, in the six continents. And we have, out of these 54,000 employees, we have around 1,400 just as high-skilled CS consultants. We, uh, we work in two parts. We, we have a, what we call engaged uh, services, that is the traditional BPO business, where we serve uh, many of our customers. And then we have another one, uh, a big area that is where the one I belong to, that is T-Tech Digital, where we do mainly technology and, and consultants. To talk about why we, we address robotics as a way to improve cost and, and CX, uh, what we do is try to analyze, based on our experience, what has uh, been the major issues, the major channel, challenge, challenges sorry, <laughs> for uh, most of the companies uh, worldwide. And, and this is the reason why we think we can really find out the right solution for, for this problem. I summarize them in three big areas. The first one is most of the companies, the bigger, the better they are, the more problems they have in terms of uh, systems uh, and applications. Although they may be uh, having a huge amount of uh, or very, or very good technology, no matter how good they are, usually these systems big CRMs, big ERPs, big billing systems, big whatever systems, these still require a lot of one intervention to do re redundant and repetitive tasks. So no matter how, how good are the systems, they still require uh, a lot of manual intervention. The other big issue is uh, interaction channels with, with the client. Uh, if our organization is opening several channels to, to the clients, what we see, and I'll explain a little later more in detail, is that these channels are, are really fragmented, are, are siloed. Uh, they have, uh, instead of being customer-centric, that is what I'll be talking about right after this, they're really uh, channel-oriented, organization-oriented. Uh, so the whole thing is, is defined per channel, and the experience you have in each channel is not the same. And the other problem is, uh, as a cons consequence of these two, is about the journeys. Customer journeys are not customer-centric journeys. Our clients uh, have, have to suffer uh, organizational-centric, channel-centric, and scattered systems processes that, that makes the whole journey fragmented, uh, scattered, et cetera. So they don't, they, we don't have a single journey. We have many journeys, depending on the channel, depending on many other things. So these three problems, at the end, are uh, compromising customer experience, uh, customer engagement, a really compromised organization. So is there any way to solve these issues uh, in the proper way uh, at the same time we so save costs and reduce our costs? That, that's, that is uh, why we think uh, robotics and automation can, can help. If I go to the next one, uh, this slide tries to present this in a graphical way. So what we're saying is you have channels, but each, each channel has a different uh, experience in terms of journeys. What I just explained, uh, you build channels on a different way, even, even the organization owns them in a, in a very, very scattered way. So web is, belongs to one department, marketing, 
uh, another channel depends to sales, another channel depends to customer service, etc. And each of them are built on different systems or are, are designed from scratch to provide certain services. But the services they provide are not the same because depending on the channel, you, you start reducing the level of services a client can, can uh, use in, in that channel. So the approach is why don't we design channels once, sorry, journeys once. We, we design a journey in a way that is the way we want our clients to, to, to go through our, our, our company, to, to, grow, to go through the experience we want to provide them. And if we can do that journey once and then expose it to any channel, the experience will be much better. Our clients will have exactly the same experience no matter which is the channel, and our channels will have all the services that we want to, to have, and we will be much more efficient because if we need to change something, we'll change only one, in one place. So this is what we consider, and it's really, really disruptive because most of the companies are doing it in, a, in, in the opposite way, starting channels, and then trying to see how much they can offer in each channel. Our approach is completely different. Start journey, design journey, and move to channel. So that way you will get a customer-centric approach that, that you don't have now. So <clears throat> to, to, to solve the problem end-to-end, -end, we propose these uh, five different steps. And the first one of them is automation, robotic automation. But it's not the only one. The first one is automation because we think that it's important to stop the bleeding, to solve the more urgent issues in the organization. Right after that, we, we think that we should go and do consolidation in terms of building the customer journeys in the proper way. And once you have done that, as I explained before, we can enable every channel or all the channels we want to, to enable, offering exactly the same frictionless, effortless, and seamless experience to our clients. After we have done that, we can start adding intelligence, so make all these channels a little more intelligent, and finally, we can add value to the whole relationship. This is our approach to uh, cover an end-to-end digital transformation, and we start with automation. Many people say, why don't you start with consolidation and processes? Why don't you improve the processes first and then go on and automate? For a very practical reason. Our approach is very, very practical, and at the end, what we have seen is that Many organizations have gone through process engineering, process optimization, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, journey mapping, uh, et cetera, and all these processes are, um, um, are done manually. So by the moment you finish them, they have already changed, and, and you need to start from scratch. And this is not a one-time one effort. But now, because of the tools, because of the visibility you can get in the organization, you have to do these type of things manually. You don't really know what is happening in your operation. You don't really know what each person is doing. You have to check it. You have to go and, and try to analyze that. So our approach is this takes a long time. It's a perfect approach. We want to decide that and, and question that, but it takes a long time. So what we think is uh, um, probably could be better if you start improving the situation from day one. So it's what we call stop the bleeding. You stop the bleeding yeah, as much as you can. You don't change the processes because ideally the process should be already right. But in any case, the moment we start doing automation, we will start getting also, as a collateral benefit, is a lot of information as what, what is happening. One of the things that comes with automation is visibility and strong analytics. A lot of data to know exactly how the, mo the four ma major axes of, of the operation are working, how the people is behaving, how the technology is behaving, how the process itself is behaving, and how your KPIs, your business KPIs are having. So this is something you don't have now, but having automation uh, can, can be achieved. So talking about automation, one thing we'd like to, to explain is this that is not that clear. Everyone has listened or has heard about RPA, Robotic Process Automation, but Robotic Process Automation really uh, includes several of them. And not all the vendors and not all the uh, manufacturers and the people selling software in the, in the market show this to the clients and tell the full truth. There's something called pure RPA. This is also called unattended uh, RPA. It means I go to a process that is run by a human being and I start automating that process to the extent that I don't need a human being. So I fully automate the process. This is purely RPA, robotic process automation, 
and a technical automation because once I automate the process, there's no more need for a human being there. This improves 100% the dependency of human beings and improves the performance of the process. This is typical from pure back office processing. But this is, uh, uh, this is not the only type of automation because most of the cases, and this is uh, surprisingly, is, is the mi minority uh, of the situations you're gonna be facing when you try to automate processing in your organization. What you're gonna be facing in most of the cases, and we're talking about front office, contact centers, branches, retail, et cetera, is that in the front office, you're not gonna be able to automate 100% of the tasks. You still need human beings to deal with the process and to deal with your clients. In that case, automation has a huge, huge opportunity still, but the, the role of automation is not to replace a human being. The role of automation and robots and bots is to help, to assist, to support, and to guide the human being. So you build automations that are helping the agents to, during this process to deal with their clients or the guys in the branch to deal with their tasks. This is what we call also assisted automation. And assisted automation can improve the process usually on average, depending on the technology, depending on the situation, of course, on average of 30, 40% up to 80%, we have processes, front office processes that have been automated 85, 90% of the whole of the whole process. This is very important to differentiate between these two types of automation because most of the vendors only talk about the upper one, or, or the first case, RPA. And with RPA, you won't be able to solve a, a contact center automation, for example, or a front office automation. Uh, no matter what anyone can say, an attended automation is not the right thing on a contact center. For, for one specific reason, contact center, you need the robot and the human being running at the same time. They have to run in parallel, and the robot has to be doing things while the agent also doing another thing. If, if the technology you choose cannot do that, you won't be able to uh, properly do RDA. In terms of uh, how, how many RDAs or how many RPAs you can find in organization, RDAs are mainly front office. So contact centers, uh, operational back office, uh, uh, branches are RDAs. And pure, pure back office processes like finance, human resources, procurement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera are uh, pure uh, RPA processes. The need for automation, we usually measure it. When, when do you need it? Uh, when do you think it's, it's, it's going to be helping you? When, whenever you have uh, this thing, you have manual tasks, it's, it's a way to define it high level. You still have manual activities on top of your system. You have systems, you have processes, but you still need manual activities on top of them. You need, you need automation. All automation can, can, can help you, can support your team. If these are repetitive tasks, predefined tasks on systems that are already there, then you can automate them. Uh, the, the target is not only because of cost. You can have issues with access to certain information. You can have issues with accuracy. You can, you can have issues with customer experience. You can have issues with security, compliance, and many other things. When we talk about automation, it's not just to reduce cost. There, there are many examples where automation, robotic process automation, automation, or intelligent automation in general, is helping to reduce uh, not only the cost, but to improve, for example, customer experience. And I'll show you an example uh, right after this, where you can see that, a real example, where you see that cost reduction is, is going to be always there, but when you re you're reducing cost, is doing uh, things right. Getting rid of those things that are not efficient. Getting rid of uh, the things that are not needed or the things that are wrong. So you improve cost, of course, and you improve performance, but you're improving also customer experience. You're improving uh, process compliance. You are improving security. You're reducing the need for training, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We, we, I'll show you one example, real example of how we apply this to get all, all these things. And as I said before, uh, there's something important, uh, and a collateral benefit is what we call workforce intelligence uh, to, uh, to automation. When you put, if you're using the right technology, when you put automation in place, uh, you not only have the, the process automated and, and, and the reduction in terms of uh, human dependency, but also something very important you can get is visibility. You can get information that you don't have now. And especially in contact center environment, 
where you have a lot of people doing a lot of things, it's very important to get information. In fact, in contact centers, you need to, to have uh, quality departments, you have to have supervisors, you have to have uh, trained people, you have to have a lot of organization, a lot of people trying to find out how, how the people is performing, how the processes are performing, how the technology is working. If, if while the, the customers are contacting you, instead of that, and you don't have full visibility on that, because you, you just mainly sample uh, these type of things, you don't listen to all the contacts, all the calls, you don't monitor all the interaction with your clients. You, you just sample some of them based on certain criteria to make it statistically uh, representative, but you don't have full information. The good thing about automation is when you do that, you have 100% visibility of what is happening there. And not only in terms of, because we use this, not only to get information about how the system, uh, sorry, how, how the whole operation is performing, but also to get information about opportunities for improvement, opportunities for automation. So the way we do it is once we put this there on the, on the client desktop and on your operation, we'll start getting information about what are the things that could be automated. And that also improves significantly uh, the efficiency of, of, of your automation. <clears throat> All this is nice when you can automate 100% of the process or you can automate your, your front office 20, 30, 40% and reduce operational cost. That is, that is amazing. That is really nice. But it wouldn't make sense if to do that, you need to go back to the organization and tell them, hey, you need to change your systems. Or you're going to take me three years or two years and I have to do it. And the, the nice thing and the and beauty about uh, RPA and, and, and robotic automation is that we can do it in a non-invasive way. Non-invasive means we don't need to require a relational APIs. We don't require interfaces, uh, web services uh, to integrate with the existing systems. We can do it with nearly no impact on the existing IT infrastructure. And the way we do it is just using user credentials. Give me a login and password of the applications that are involved or the systems involved in this process, and we can automate it. So this is one of the key differentiators. It's non-invasive. I don't, I don't change, I don't do anything in the system system. Then we can do it with any application. So we found we have many clients, and you cannot imagine the number of different applications they are running on their contact center, on the desktop. We have an insurance company that has the, the record that is 450 applications, four, five, zero different applications. But in many of our telco clients, for example, we have 50 to 25 different applications on the desktop. And now there are many, many clients trying to get to one application. They know we, we're going to reduce, uh, I mean, the complexity put in one application. But even one application with thousands of, of tabs, thousands of screens, thousands of steps, because at the end, you have to put everything together. So the key thing is you have, you have to be able to do automation, no matter who, how many and which type of application. It can be all mainframe green screens, can be web applications, can be internal applications, can be virtual environments, whatever you have there. Excel, Excel, a a Access, anything should be uh, automated if they are part of the process and you want to, to, to do the automation. And the last thing, and very important, is you have to be able to do all of this very fast. So you need to show return of investment really fast. And we're talking about days, weeks, never months or more than that. So the key thing about uh, automation is that you can do it non-invasive for any application and very, very, very fast. So I'm going to show an example, a real example of what is this and how we do it. So this is a real example of one of our clients. It's a telecom company. And we're going to show you here a real billing inquiry uh, call, uh, problem. So a client calls to do a billing inquiry, and the agent needs to perform these eight tasks that are here. So for this call, the agent will be doing these eight tasks. To do these eight tasks, then you have to go through many different applications and screens uh, and in many different systems. So it's, it's really, it's really a, a, a big issue in terms of how it takes and how many applications uh, they need to run. So let me show you how we do it. And Pauline, if you can, you can switch to the, to the video, it will help me a lot. Okay, I'm sorry, everyone. We don't unfortunately have a, <laughs> we don't unfortunately have a robot to do this for us. 
so we will have to do it manually. So I apologise that we this may take just a minute or two to do that, but okay. hopefully now that should work. And I will just um, click from here. There we go. Thank you so much, Evelyn. This is a, what we call a side by side comparison. You will see on the right side, is a real video where you have an expert agent running these eight tasks on the right, manually, fully manually, no assisted uh, automation. On the left side, you have uh, the same agent, but running this with uh, the support of uh, automation. You have robot helping and assisting them. And below, you can see we're showing when each of these tasks uh, is, is finished, is performed. Obviously, the agent on the left side is going faster because uh, the robot is helping, assisting them of what they do. The yellow pointer in each of the screens is the mouse and, uh, and the pointer, what, what the agent is doing in each case. You can see that the person on the right side is an expert agent that knows the processes and all, all, knows all the things very well. He's going as fast as he can because he knows exactly what to do, but he's doing a lot of things. The agent on the left side is not moving the mouse that much because the, the robot, the automation, is the one really running everything on, on his behalf. So the, the, the first uh, result out of this is that you will see that the agent on the left side is going much faster. So it finished, we, we stop it, thank you, Pauline, and, and the left side is 58 seconds, while the, the guy on the right side, the agent on the right side, will take three minutes and three seconds to do exactly the same. So this is the first uh, out outcome that we can take out of our automation. Customer experience. The agent on the left side uh, has provided a better customer experience because the client has to be there only less than one minute, while the client on the right side has to stay, uh, wait, wait there for three minutes, more than three minutes. So, uh, can, and Pauline, I, I'll go back to the, to the slides. I'll go to the next one. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, this, when we finish this, this is what we usually show. The, the summary of the results of this automation. So the, the main one is what I said. Uh, we are improving customer experience, and at the same time, we are saving close to 69, I mean, close to 70% of the operational time. This is 70% cost reduction in, uh, on, on our contact center, because a process that used to take three minutes and three seconds is now, now done in 58 seconds. But this is not the key one, or the only one, I would say. We also measure what you see here in the last uh, of the three columns on the right, we also measure how many keystrokes both agents had to do to get this uh, uh, done. So the agent on the right side had to do 92 keystrokes to perform the eight tasks, while the agent on the left side had, had to press only four keystrokes. What, what does it mean? It means that the agent on the right side had to know all the applications, had to know all the systems, all the steps, all the processes, everything, huge training, very expert agent to do it properly right <clears throat> and not to forget or to miss uh, anything. While the agent on the right, left side had to press only four keys. It, 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 it was guided, it was driven by the robot to tell him do, what is next, what is next, what is next. And he had to press only, he has to press only four keys. Notes. So in terms of training, there's a huge difference of the training need to be on the right side than the training need on the automated side. But it's not the only thing. The agent on the right side with 92 keystrokes, being human beings, and we, we all make mistakes, can make a lot of mistakes. While the agent on the left side with four keystrokes doesn't have that much room for mistakes. So we're talking about process compliance here. So we ensure that the agent on the left side meet the requirements of the process, did the right thing, solved the issue, and, and fulfill the process in a proper way. So you, you have process compliance. Why on the, on the right side, you may have errors and you may have uh, other things. And, and something else, the agent on the right side uh, has, to, has to know everything. The agent on the left side can be a, a fresh guy, a junior guy, and will be able to perform exactly the same that the senior and expert guy. But there's, we, we also, also insist, on, on insist on something. If the agent on the left side is only doing key, four key strokes, it means also that he doesn't need to be focused. He doesn't have to put all his brain power on solving and dealing with, with the systems and the process the steps. He can focus on dealing with the client. And this is the most important thing. So you can get your, your human beings delivering on the real, where, where they can bring value. And in this case, is in the human interaction. So he can be listening to the client, he, he 
can get empathy with the client. He can understand the issues. He can solve the issue. He can do even other things like upselling, cross-selling, whatever you want, because he can be really focused on dealing with, 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 the, with the client, while the A on the right side can do that. So when we talk about automation, we're not talking only about cost savings. That can be huge. But also, we're talking about customer experience, process compliance, train reduction, and so on and so on. So this is the type of benefits we see um, when we do these type of things. Going back to our approach on an end-to-end -end thing, this is why we start with automation. We think, and, and this is important to, to identify, many, many people say, okay, but robotics, RPA, is, is tactical or is strategic? If, if you do automation, why cannot you do it with your own system? Why don't you change the system below and the underlying system? Everyone that has been or that is in a, in a big organization knows that some of these legacy systems, the CRM, uh, is something you cannot change overnight. It's something you cannot touch and change because the whole business depends on that. And these are systems that by nature uh, cannot be changed overnight. The example I usually put is uh, we have a client that w wanted to uh, do a change on their, on their web to sell a different product and services for a small period of time. They wanted to do this campaign for one week. So they went to, to the IT department and said, I need to do this change. Uh, and they said, okay, you'll have it in six months. We'll be able to implement this and have it working in, the, in, in your web page. So he said, I cannot wait that much. So they came to us and said, hey, Rafa, I have this problem. I didn't know that, that internal IT told him that it was six months to, to solve the issue. They came to us and they said, hey, Rafa, uh, can you do this for me? And I said, okay, yes, yes, we can. And he said, how long it will take you? And we said, five days. It, it will take us five days to do this. So, uh, and it's true. We, we solve it in five days. Does it mean they don't need to change and keep on doing the right thing with, the, with their own IT systems? No. I mean, they can do it. In fact, our approach to this is, if you, your system IT infrastructure, your system systems, automate them as much as you can. Improve as much as you can. But sometimes that is not enough, and, and you cannot get it that fast. So in, mean, in the meantime, the organization is building. And even if they can do it, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Because if I'm going to be doing a change that requires only one week, and it's going to take me six months, it doesn't make sense to do it. So robotics is, 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 is tactical, and it's bringing you the option and the flexibility that you, you cannot have with the, the, the rest of the systems. When can uh, RPA and RDA and robotics in general become a study? When you use it as, a, as an step to do other things. And that's where we, as you can see in this slide, that's why we talk after the RDA, RPA, we talk about case management. Uh, why? Because usually you can only automate tasks. But if you want to automate an end-to-end -end process, what we call a case, you will need uh, something that we call, I mean, the market and the, the industry calls business process management. If your robotic solution is integrated with, with uh, business process management, then you, you, can, you will be able to, to have a robotic process and strategic decision and embed it as part of your uh, risk management BP study. And we think this is the right way to go. And, and whatever you invest on, on robotics, it won't be a strategic, sorry, it won't be tactical, it will be a study. And then you can continue improving the rest of the things to reach the full value chains we put in there. This is something we usually show our clients and we commit results after that because you cannot, it doesn't make sense to do these type of things if you don't have a business case behind. So are you going to do automation? Are you going to do robotics automation? You need, you need to understand what are going to be the benefits of that. If you're going to change your, your, your journeys, what is the benefit are, uh, you're going to get out of that? So what we usually do with this is we, we show clients this type of uh, steps where we're getting so far, depending on the organization, depending on the systems, of course, this depends a lot, but we're getting 50 to 70 percent savings in operational costs while we are increasing customer experience in a, in a high way. Why, uh, oh, sorry, on how we do that? We are putting here some examples of how can you automate, what are things you automate. Um, and one of the key things we do also, that we, I haven't really highlighted before, is we not only address front office, said you can address back office also as part of uh, your automation. And I'm not talking about pure RPA. You can use an RDA and, and also an RPA 
and blend them and merge them so you can avoid many issues that are happening there. In many cases, we've seen in, in, in the market, especially in, in industries with, where they have a huge back office, I'm talking about finance, financial services, telecom, utilities, where you have a front office dealing with a client, and then you have a huge back office, operational back office, dealing with these client's issues that you cannot solve in the front office. So what we usually do, we will take some of these back office processes, fully automated, and as I say, we bring it back to the front office. So they are solved there. We're not increasing what the front office agent has to do, of course. What we do is eliminate the need to do a second step to, to send it to a different department because you can solve those things uh, if you have fully automated them. This way, your client has this one-stop shop where they go there and you, they serve, and they don't need to wait for another department to solve the issue. This also solves a lot of issues because they, you, you, anyone in contact center knows that when you do these type of things, you start having repeated calls with the clients asking, calling back again, saying, how is my issue, how is my issue, is somebody solved my issue, etc. And of course, customer satisfaction is, is there. When we talk about consolidation and journeys, there's a lot of processes that are not the way they should be, as I explained before. So it's relatively easy to change these processes, but the whole approach we're, we're discussing here is an approach where we don't touch the underlying systems. Because if not, it's business as usual. It wouldn't make sense to talk about what we're talking today. We, we talk about intelligent automation, we're talking about being able to improve the current situation without impacting the existing systems. If the existing system can improve as much as possible, sure, you should do it, and you should do it as soon as possible. But meanwhile, you do that, you can put a, a layer, in fact, we're talking about two layers, RPA, thinner, and VPN below that, that can isolate, shield your, your customer operations, your business processes uh, from the underlying system. And finally, if you do it right, you can enable any channel and expose that to any channel. This has a huge uh, impact, as everyone knows, in terms of cost also, because you can uh, forward, you can deplex calls interaction from one channel to another channel, depending on the cost, the interest, the type of client, the type of service you want to, you want to write. Finally, you can add intelligence on top of that to reduce uh, the human dependency or to increase the level, of, uh, the level of service you can provide to your client. And finally, we talk always about enrich, and we have been discussing this a lot with our clients, because in most of the cases, the interactions with your clients are not bringing value. I mean, bring value in terms of service in terms of experience, but they don't bring uh, monetary value, the financial value in, in some cases. So some clients want to add value in every interaction. And the, a typical example of this is MBA or next best action. When you do that, you can generate, you can do upselling, cross-selling on any interaction. Even service interaction, complaint interaction can have a value added on top of that. And in that case, you, you, you switch from pure typical discussion of cost, cost center versus value center or revenue center. And this is something that can be done if you do it properly. You, when we mean properly is because you have now all the information about what is happening with your clients and you have been able to provide automation that drives this value on a one-to-one -one basis. So it means for each and every client, you understand their situation, you understand what you can offer, and you understand how to improve what you're doing for them. Uh, internally, what, what we recommend always is to, to prove it. All this sounds very nice, but uh, <clears throat> technology is, is very important, makes a difference, but not only that, it's important to understand uh, who's going to do it and if they have the right knowledge. So for each of the things we, we've been talking today, uh, automation, desktop automation, uh, full process automation, workforce intelligence, uh, case management, channel optimization, channel implementation, you should be able to prove and to demonstrate that the technology you choose can do that and the partner of the people helping you to do that, or if you do it yourself, you, you can really do it. We insist a lot on this because technology is key, as I said before, but it's not the only thing. You need to have the right knowledge to understand how this is, is, is done. For one specific reason, and that's why we were talking in the previous slide about, and I went very fast over it because it, it, it should be uh, subject for a different season is, is the center of excellence. One of the key things on automation is that you, you will have impact on many different areas. So it's not about bringing the technology, implementing the technology, reducing the cost, automating the services. When you do that, 
you'll, you'll have a huge impact on many things in, in your organization. The main one is change, but the other one is you will be impacting the organization. So you have to be ready to do that in advance. If not, you may not succeed. There's a lot of companies trying RPA and they don't succeed. They cannot scale. They cannot uh, uh, get the, the results and the savings they will get it. And sometimes, well, a big part of it is technology, and a big, big part of it is how they implement it, how they are applying it, and how they're managing all the changes in the organization. I usually put an example that happened to us, and it was my first automation. I did it 11 years ago. I was responsible for a huge uh, uh, VP operation, and, and I have part of this operation outsourced, uh, sorry, offshore in, 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 in another country. So in a very nice way, we implemented uh, automation, and we got amazing, amazing, amazing savings for our process. When we send these automations to the offshore location for our colleagues to implement it, the, re the results were not the reduction, it was the 30% reduction we expected, but a, but a 30, 35% increase on, on our channel time. And, and the reason why uh, it failed, it was not a technology. It's because, I, and it took me years to, to understand that, it's because I asked my colleagues to do something against their own interest. They, if they really implement this in the proper way, they will have disappeared and the offshore wouldn't be needed anymore. So when we send this automation for them to implement it, they, they said, no, it doesn't make sense. And the results were not successful because the, uh, it makes sense. They, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't commit suicide to get rid of it. So it's important to, to know the impact in the organization, and it's important to understand how these things work. So our approach is uh, recommend to do proof of concept first. Proof of concept has comes with a business case after that to, under, to understand the real benefits on my house on my systems, on my processes, on my uh, team. Uh, well, we, we have done this, I don't know if you can see the slide very well, but we have done this in, in many different uh, clients. Uh, if one of the key things is to have the, the, the knowledge of the business and the right experience. All the teams we bring are a mixed team. This is an example of one telco in, in Europe where we, we start automating a small number of processes. We have automated by, by so far more than 500 processes, and the impact on their process are, goes from 27% improvement to 94% improvement. And has been a really successful one. So we have many, many different cases like that. We have another one, another leading telecom company, where the number of, uh, is, is about uh, leading uh, the revenue they can get and improve the return of their MBA activities. We have, for example, another one that this is uh, where we, we have another, this is also a, a telecom company where we have achieved more than 50% reduction in total cost um, and the incremental revenue they got is, is also very, very relevant. In this case, for them, it was very important also to measure MPS, net promoter score, and the increase of net promoter score was, was really, really relevant. And this is another example where we, we were working for a government to help them to sell. They were selling, this is a real estate company, and they got owned by the government, and, and they wanted to sell, but not only sell, but makes, makes their full journey for their potential buyers is uh, frictionless, uh, effortless, and they, they, they have a huge amount of uh, different organizations involved in the process, and, and it was really painful for, for, for the clients, for the buyers, to get through the whole process, so, they, they were not reaching the end. So we using, first of all, uh, quality process automation and then using VPN, we got huge improvement in terms of uh, the overall results, in terms of sales, but also the time uh, saved in the whole process was, was, really, was really amazing. It was like close to 80%. <clears throat> and this is what I wanted to tell you today. Uh, this I want to share with you guys. So uh, now, if, if you have questions, I'll be very glad to, to answer them and address them. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Rafa. I mean, I think there was so much content there. 
um, lot certainly for, for people to think about and really try to understand where maybe they can best apply those different types of robotics and, and automation in their own organisation. So a huge thanks for taking the time to present that to us today. We've got some questions lined up, so I'll just start working through them if that's all right. So uh, a question just on the demo, um, I'll just read it out directly to you. Whilst every intervention will be different uh, depending on many factors, what typically is the cost of investment for the robotics you used in the demo? Whilst it shows a 69% improvement in productivity, what is the net saving? Is there anything that you can share on that, Rafa? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it all depends on the, uh, in terms of cost, first I'll, I'll address uh, part of my part. I mean, when you do these type of things, you have uh, software licenses uh, that you need to use. Uh, what I can tell you in terms of the, I'm not going to tell you the, the, the cost because it all depends on the volume mainly, but usually the cost of the licenses and the implementation, I mean, licenses plus professional services, the return of investment usually doesn't go beyond three months. So in less than three months, you have been able to recover what you have invested in terms of licenses and professional services. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we talk about uh, you, you were asking about 69% improvement in productivity. What is the net saving? The net saving is 69% in this uh, key example. The thing is, you will probably don't have this process only. You have many other processes in your call center. You, don't, you won't be able to improve exactly the same in all the processes because some processes require less, uh, uh, less, less manual intervention and will require more. What we usually say is that the net uh, the result you can get in a normal contact center, depending on these all details, is around 20 to 30 percent. We, we are reaching in some places 70 percent improvement, but the normal one is around 30 percent on average mm -hmm. on the total uh, impact. That there's something important to, to highlight here is when you deal with an automation, and we're talking about contact center, to sum, summarize and simplify a lot the interaction. You, the interaction with the client has two parts. One is the conversation. You have an agent and a client talking. And then you have a paradise where you have the agent doing things on, on the systems, dealing with the system. The automation can reduce, for sure, most of all the, the, the part of the system one. But uh, although it kind of impacts the, the talking time, it doesn't really reduce it. So if you have a conversation, uh, sorry, uh, interaction that is, imagine, 10 minutes average of time, we can, and five minutes is conversation, five minutes is system uh, time, we can reduce the five-minute system time. But it doesn't mean that the total savings is going to be five minutes, because if your agents later on go, and instead of talking five minutes, go and talk 10 minutes, your savings will be zero. So that's why I was saying that the managing the operations and the other things behind the technology are very important, because the success of this, and to be able to really take the benefits out of it, you have to manage many other components. Yeah. No, absolutely, I understand that completely. Um, I think for me what would be quite an interesting thing, you know, there's, there's been a lot of conversation over the last, I don't know, five years or so about, you know, people being worried that this type of technology will reduce jobs or the type of jobs certainly that we have just now, but, you know, I, I, I'd be interested to know if you've got any feedback from agents within your business where the technology has been introduced. What What's their take on it? How have they felt when they've been, when this has been been implemented on some of the work that they've been doing well uh, I mean yeah everyone says oh, I mean this is gonna this is to replace human beings is to reduce mm. uh, and, and uh, what are you gonna do with the people that, that you may be uh, first of all I mean well, our experience is in most of the cases you cannot replace the people fully replace people you, you have I mean you will be able to reduce the need for people because uh, you won't find too many RPAs in your organization you'll find many RPAs in organizations so Robots will be helping and assisting people. In that case, your, your staff will be, uh, you, you will improve employee satisfaction. It's true that if I take, I have a call center, 1,000 uh, agents, and I improve 30% my efficiency, there's uh, 300 guys that, that, that I don't need to do the same because they, they will be redundant. So mm -hmm. what do you do with those 300 people? What we've seen in many places is, uh, instead of get, firing 300 guys, the organization now is doing different things and, and starting being, for example, more proactive and investing mm -hmm. these 300 resources on, on being proactive to the clients, on being doing outbound and, and selling activities or customer experience initiatives to improve their customer experience and to improve revenue. Because before, mm -hmm. you were not able to do that because it was very costly, but now 
we, we are saving a lot of resources that can be applied to things that are more important. But mm -hmm. at the end, the question is, if you have people, human beings, doing things that doesn't require human being, you shouldn't do it. I mean, yeah. if, if you have one person taking a, 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 a pressing a key, pressing a key, pressing a key, doing nothing else, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Human beings should be there where you bring value. And, mm -hmm. and you need human beings and brains to do things that machines and robots cannot do so far. And that is what, what we're doing in other places, moving human beings from doing activities where they don't bring any value to activities where they can bring a lot of value to the organization. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, no, thank you for that. That was a really interesting take on it. Um, I guess another thing for me that I thought was was um, was quite useful was the whole analytics and insight piece that you can get back from taking, you know, some of those um, some of those things that you talked about, some of those actions, and automating them and identifying those opportunities for improvement. Have you got any examples from some of the customers that you have on where that's been really successful by using, you know, that type of analytics? Yeah, yeah, in many places because I, I mean, because of, for the sake of time, I haven't shown a real demo of the uh, workforce delay. What we do is, when you do that, you start putting, uh, this is not something that requires automation. I mean, you, you put the automation behind, you're not automating the process, but the system is capturing a lot of information. The, the system captures all the information you want from your, 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 your staff and your people. And then using the database is a huge amount of data. And using big data technology, what we do is we process all information, but not to just produce analytics and reports. What we do is we have artificial intelligence behind that, telling you, okay, I'm seeing now that you have uh, 3,000 times a day doing a, a, your people doing cut and paste here. Or you have this repetitive task that is done so many times, and we can automate it. So the, the way we use this is to find out automation opportunities and, and, and the workforce uh, intelligence uh, service we, we provide what it does is, is putting together this big data but this uh, AI to identify these things that are happening every day so with that you will have a, a, a business case saying okay you're going to be saving uh, 300,000 uh, pounds here you're, you're going to save or, or dollars or euros depending on the, on the situation and the region where you are talking about because you're going to do this uh, you're doing this uh, 3,000 times a day every day for to the, uh, the whole year. And this other activity you are doing this much and you can save this much. So that is the, the, the main application. We have another example and that is uh, what I was saying before. We don't have full visibility of what is happening. And we don't have full visibility of how our people is using the tools and the processes. And we don't know what is really the opportunity to improve a process because if you have a call center with 1,000 agents, there will be probably 1,000 different ways to, to deal with this, with, with the process. So the idea is to standardize that, identify which is the right one, and see if that is the way we're doing it, and, and guarantee that we, everyone does the thing in the right way. And that is, that is a huge improvement. And the last one, it was a, a real example of a CIO. We, we have the COO, the chief operating officer of a big organization, uh, asking the CIO to implement this. So we did a demo with a proof of concept, and we showed this to the CIO so that the COO could, could convince him. When the CEO, the CIO, the chief information officer, saw it, he said, okay, I don't mind all the benefits this is bringing for operation. This is also key for me because now I know with, with a laser uh, type of precision what, 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 are, what are my users, internal users, using of my applications. And I know I don't need to change the full CRM. I need to change this specific screen or this specific query or this specific field because that is what all my, my I mean, this is what is most uh, uh, used in, in, my, in, my, in my organization. And I can spend time only trying to address this, and I'll be addressing the, the key and the most important things for my internal users. So there's many, many different uh, mm -hmm. uh, benefits out, out of this uh, analysis and this information coming out of the automation. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm just conscious we're getting close to the top of the hour, so um, really appreciate everyone's attention today, and thank you for joining us. I, I hope that you found that useful and uh, took something away that you can maybe go and think about what that might mean for your own organisation. A huge thanks to, to Rafa and the team at T-Tech for allowing this uh, session to be able to, to happen, and really appreciate all the input that you've had that. So uh, again, just picking up from the beginning, we are recording the session, so you will be able to access it again, and we'll send out the links 
to, to access that along with the presentation. So have a great rest of, of the afternoon and look forward to seeing you at a CCA session soon. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.